Ultimately, the appeal of the Bukele model across Latin America is less about effective policy and more about the political points it scores. Leaders see Bukele's approach as a powerful tool to rally frustrated citizens with promises of swift action and decisive results. But in practice, it often sidesteps the complex realities that drive crime in their own countries. By invoking Bukele's methods, politicians tap into a populist desire for order and control, even if it means compromising democratic principles. Hi, I'm Juliana Rubio, Associate Director with the Americas Program at CSIS, and I'm here to talk about my recent report with Andrea Cacique, The Burgeoning Regional Appeal of Manudura Crime-Fighting Strategies. Latin America has the highest homicide rate in the world. Even traditional safe havens like Costa Rica and Chile are experiencing sharp rises in crime and violence. This environment has driven support for tough-on-crime political platforms and leaders who promise swift and often punitive measures. El Salvador President Najib Bukele exemplifies this trend through the so-called Bukele model, a hardline approach that has gained popularity across the region. His policies are increasingly admired by citizens and leaders alike. His success, however, relies on measures that carry steep societal costs and fail to address the root causes of violence, making this approach ultimately unsustainable and unable to provide long-term solutions. It is important to note that a key part of Bukele's appeal lies in his mastery of the media using social platforms and control narratives to grab relatable authoritative images that resonate widely, allowing him to maintain popularity even as his administration enacts controversial policies that erode democratic norms. The reality is that for many, invoking the Bukele model is less about real policy and more about leveraging public frustration with crime. While they highlight his success in lowering violence, few openly address the sacrifices it demands, curtailed civil liberties, diminished democratic institutions, and unchecked executive power, and the near total control of the country by a single political party. Yet politicians from Guatemala to Argentina have invoked the Bukele model as they advocate for tougher security policies. In Guatemala, politicians have used Bukele's image and language to rally support during elections. In Honduras, a similar state of emergency has led to widespread human rights abuses without significantly reducing gang activity or extortion. Costa Rica's president, Rodrigo Chavez, has urged Congress to pass tough on crime laws. Ecuador's president, Daniel Novoa, has adopted Bukele's style, pledging to combat crime with new mega prisons and militarized tactics. In Argentina, government officials have traveled to El Salvador to study Bukele's strategies. Ultimately, the appeal of the Bukele model across Latin America is less about effective policy and more about the political points it scores. Leaders see Bukele's approach as a powerful tool to rally frustrated citizens with promises of swift action and decisive results. But in practice, it often sidesteps the complex realities that drive crime in their own countries. By invoking Bukele's methods, politicians tap into a populist desire for order and control, even if it means compromising democratic principles. This rhetoric serves more as a campaign strategy than as a sustainable solution, risking long-term stability and short-term political gains. To read the full report, The Burgeoning Regional Appeal of Manudura Crime-Fighting Strategies, please visit csis.org.